Hey, today we're gonna to talk about the secret to playing bass if you've got small hands. We'll see you inside the video. Hey guys, it's James here from eBass Guitar and welcome to another episode of our podcast interview series, Real World Bass Heroes. Now I'm back with our special guest, Sean Unwin. And when we were filming and talking earlier today, Sean let it slip to me that she has really, really small hands. And I said to her, how on earth do you do that? You're playing a standard for... What is hello? Why is my watch going? Typical Siri, always wanted to be involved. So I posed the question, how do you play bass with really, really small hands? And this is a question we get a lot here on the eBass Guitar YouTube channel. So I thought I asked Deshaun, how do you go about tackling a pretty big instrument like this, playing with small hands? You know, you need to use what you can to make your job as easy as possible. So in this case, I would suggest being as efficient as you possibly can with technique. So it's all down to the technique. What about this thing that a lot of people do, they jump to using short scale basses straight away? For me, short scale basses are a good option if you've had injury or if you're not quite coping with the strain of a full size one, but I'm not sure that it's a permanent fix going forward. Yeah. I'm not sure either if it is the best solution going forward, particularly if you want to go up into bigger instruments like 35 or 36 inch scale length instruments. It really does start to limit you. So I always recommend to students start on a 34 and get the technique down. Now, Sean has some great techniques that she's going to share this lesson. So today we're going to show you a killer exercise to start mastering the bass guitar fretboard on a 34 inch neck if you've got small hands. Then we're going to take you into a real classic Stevie Wonder bass line to show you how this actually works in practice. There's going to be a link to the PDF so everything we're discussing today will be written out in its standard notation and tab. You can grab your copy by clicking the link in the description below. So Sean, what is the fundamental technique that you should work on if you want to start playing the bass guitar and you've got small hands? So I found the most useful technique was the spider exercise, something that I use for a warm-up drill. And I will always, always make sure it's done by my students as well. So do you use the standard one finger per fret technique when you're doing this? Absolutely, but with a twist. So the twist is that I, I can't reach. I can't reach a finger per fret, especially down this end of the neck. So let me get this right. You can't reach a finger per fret down in the lower frets, but you still make the one finger per fret technique work. How does that happen? I do. So what I do is I shift and I shift as I do the exercise to make sure that I maintain the accuracy, but it's also comfortable and I have a good reach. Go on, show us how this works. So I will still do a finger per fret, but I will shift as I go. All right, so let's look at what your hand is doing very slowly. Play that really slowly for us. So what I'm observing happening there is by the time you've got your second finger down, your first finger is all starting to gently slide up. Exactly, exactly. And then what happens by the time your third finger's down? So both my first and second finger start moving as well. So they almost go like a little bit like a conveyor belt. So you're always constantly shifting and adjusting, which means you don't have to maintain that massive stretch if your hands aren't physically big enough to do it. Exactly. So you will practice the spider exercise all over the fretboard and make sure that you can do that. Yeah, it's not as vital when you're at this end of the neck because obviously the frets, as they, as they get slimmer, it's much easier to reach. But as you know, when you're playing bass, a lot of lines take place lower down the neck. So in order to resolve any kind of disadvantage you might have, if you start shifting as you do the exercise, it's no longer a disadvantage. Brilliant. So you'll practice that slowly and then put it to a metronome, I guess? Absolutely, yep. And then you'll just gradually get faster and faster until you're no longer needing to think about the shift. So will you start practicing it on the higher frets where they're smaller or do you just dive in straight at the lower frets? No, I'd start high up in order to get used to the technique um, and to make sure that everything is, is comfortable and that you're used to how the spider exercise works. 
But once you're used to that, I would bring it down and build yourself up gradually. One thing that I love to get students to do with e-bass guitars, to do the spider exercise and then gently move it back a fret. Because what you're doing is you're just incrementally stretching your fingers out, which will make learning this technique that much simpler, particularly if you do it over a few weeks or a few months. So what I urge you to do is rather than just jumping straight for that short scale bass, is practice this to begin with. Give it a few weeks, give it a few months and see if it makes the difference. One thing I'm super passionate about over at ebassguitar.com is taking any technical exercise, then putting it into the real world and seeing that practical application. That's exactly what we're gonna do now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the legendary Stevie Wonder bass line, I wish, and we're gonna show you how to use this constant shifting and adjusting technique to make that bass line work. But first of all, let's hear Sean play it up to tempo. Sean, you're using two techniques in that bass line there. You're using the four over three or samandal technique in there, which is another great technique if you've got small hands, but also you can very clearly see the one finger per fret technique working. So can you talk us through slowly how that bass line's working? Absolutely. So when you're starting on the E flat at the beginning, I'm actually starting the line with my little finger, Brilliant. my pinky. Um, and that allows me sort of the, the most amount of time to be able to move down to the low end of the bass. So little finger down to first finger. Yep. And then I shift to the next note Brilliant. and I go one, four, and then back down again. So there you're using the four over three technique. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Carry on. And then I actually do the same thing. So it is actually entirely symmetrical. So I'll go little finger, first finger, shift, four over three. And then I'll go one finger per fret. Brilliant very clearly see the hands adjusting there to make that stretch. Exactly. Just to make that walk up a lot easier, but also to prepare that finger for the next note as well. Brilliant. So, and the same thing here, first finger, shift, and then four over three. And then it just goes round. And then you use the one finger per fret technique again to, to get back up to the E flat. All the way back, exactly. And then I'm ready to jump back down. Brilliant. So Sean has given you a really great real world bit of fingering there that you can use to play this bass line. So make sure you check out those two techniques, the four over three, but specifically, and this is what this lesson is all about, is the one finger per fret adjusting. If you can get that down, that is the secret to playing the bass guitar, even if you've got small hands. So let's finish the lesson again and hear Sean jamming over that bass line. And I'm also going to get her to break out a little bit and put some fills and extra excitement in there so you can see her in action. So guys, that's the end of today's video. If you've got any tips on how to approach playing the bass guitar using small hands, please let us know what's worked for you in the comments below. If you need any help pushing your bass guitar playing forward, please head over to ebassguitar.com. Check out the Bass Lab Plus. There's a full step-by-step -step program there for the beginner to intermediate bass player who wants to take his bass playing to that more advanced level. That's it for today. Cheers, I've been James from ebassguitar.com and thank you to Sean Unwin. Thank you. And we will see you next time.